Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for bearing with us a little bit and uh, for joining me to talk about the Rocky Linux special interest groups and a little overview of Rocky Linux, um, how our SIGs interact with all of our teams and with the organization at a whole, and as well as outside organizations, um, and, and really kind of show you that SIGs are the lifeblood of, of Rocky, and they're everything that we can do to enable the success and uh, contributions of anyone in the open source community that wants to bring something to uh, enterprise Linux. And we helped encourage that in a lot of different ways. Um, so my name is Neil Hanlon. I am a potato engineer, which doesn't really mean anything, but it also means so many things. Um, I got my start doing network engineering and Linux engineering stuff, uh, eventually moved on to be a co-founder of the Rocky Linux project, uh, and now I work at CIQ, who's one of the primary sponsors of um, the Rocky Linux project and our Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation. Um, they, I'm, I'm super fortunate for them to pay for me to work full time mm -hmm. on Rocky Linux and um, the RESF and, and various other projects that they are involved in in the open source space. Um, I, yeah, that's about it. There's some other stuff there. Fun, fun things. Go follow my cat on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so wh what is Rocky Linux? I think if you're here, you probably might know a little bit, but um, Rocky is a community-driven enterprise Linux distribution. We aim to be 100% compatible with the upstream enterprise Linux standard, and um, our community cares a lot about stability, like Red the Red Hat community and people that are, are familiar and used to using Red Hat. Um, they want an organization they can count on that is going to be here and uh, not going to run away or leave them stranded using software um, that they were depending on. Um, everyone who co-founded Rocky was kind of in a, a situation with CentOS that they felt we needed to um, have something else available for, for this. And so that's really why Rocky um, was, was founded after the shift from CentOS Linux to CentOS Stream Linux, and I'll talk a bit about why that's a good thing um, in a little bit. So Rocky is part of the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation. Um, this is an organization that myself and a number of other our other team leads who co-founded Rocky um, created and spent considerable time debating and talking and uh, thinking through how we wanted the organization structured um, such that we could build a a house for Rocky Linux that was you know, more or less impenetrable and wouldn't be subject to the wills of any corporation, whether it's you know, my employer, who is obviously, a, like I said, a primary principal sponsor of Rocky or any other organization. I mean, we have uh, sponsors from AWS, from Google, from Arm, and, and various other corporations, and it's, we're very fortunate for those as well. So um, we want to foster the collaboration, really, with those organizations and any organization using Rocky Linux, but also acknowledging that at the end of the day, it's people that are making these decisions. It's the individuals who are part of these companies using Rocky that are advocating for and using, depending on Rocky. Um, I'm pretty proud of this vision of the, the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation. Um, we really do all want to create a, and nurture this community of individuals. We are, we were all total strangers like three and a half years ago. Um, we didn't really know who we could trust. It was built over time as we got to know one another and kind of in the purest expression of, of community in a lot of ways. Um, so we're coming to this place and wanting to preserve that ideal uh, and keep Rocky and whatever other projects want to be part of the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation um, available for enterprise use, available for corporations and um, entities to use, but also really strongly considering the, the individual aspect of, of who's really making decisions to use these things. Um, within the Rocky Linux project, we have kind of two large categories of um, our team. So we have the Rocky Linux project board, which reports up to the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation board. Um, the foundation board members, both the project board and the Rocky, uh, are the 
both the project board and the foundation board are voted on by the members of the foundation. Um, but these two categories, you know, technical steering and outreach, largely kind of define what those groups are responsible for. Um, we're trying not to muddy the waters too much about um, people that are really only interested in the technical sides of things, having to participate and have opinions on uh, all of the minutia of outreach and vice versa. The people that are focused on outreach and design and everything else don't necessarily need to be involved with all of the conversations around engineering and, and having all those technical details. It's especially important as we are a like entirely volunteer project. Um, I, I am employed full time to work on, on Rocky, but I am the only one to my knowledge that is uh, you know, working on, on Rocky in a full time capacity. Um, we do have some members who you know, have employers that are um, grateful to donate time and uh, that's super welcome and, and appreciated. Um, but we definitely try to keep in mind that all the people on these teams are volunteers largely and we don't want to ask so much of them to take all of their time when they're doing really great stuff already. Um, so SIGs kind of sit across all of this. They, the team's responsibilities for special interest groups is to um, maintain like the shared responsibility across them, right? We're ultimately responsible for the artifacts and code and whatever else goes out and is the content of these special interest groups. We need to make sure that they're not releasing non-free code, that it's complying with license, that it complies with our security practices and that we're doing testing to ensure that things are coming out how we expect them to come out. Um, I think this one's particularly important because of the audience for Rocky Linux. They're, it's similar to extra packages for enterprise Linux from, from the Fedora project where, yes, you can bring in a Fedora, project or a Fedora package, but don't necessarily just continuously bump it to the, the most recent version. It is Fedora in that you can use the Fedora packages, but there's a level of expectation for stability that is uh, come to be known basically for the Apple project and for enterprise Linux as a whole. So we're treading a kind of a line between stability and also having the ability to um, bring in the most recent features that people want to be able to use. Um, so yeah, the, the teams are responsible for making sure they adhere to best practices around our security. Um, like I said, non-free software or, or tainted software. And also like if a SIG wants to release something, like an uh, example that came up recently was um, for the rock chip boards that we were kind of talking about before this got started, um, there's a binary blob from the provider that you can download and run on your board so that you can boot Linux essentially. And so we were having a conversation essentially around, do we want, and this was a couple weeks after the whole XZ thing came down. Do we want to just go and grab a blob from GitHub and ship a package in a SIG? And the decision we all sort of came around in the SIG as well as upstream of the SIG was not really. Uh, we can provide instructions and, and information on how to get those blobs and use them, but it's at your own risk and we don't feel comfortable providing a package that would install that for you uh, by default. So. Those are some of the interactions that we have with the, you know, specifically in security, release engineering, et cetera. Um, I want to take a quick look at some of these teams and what all their responsibilities are, because that will lead into you know, how they interact with these SIGs. We've got release engineering, which is led by uh, Lewis Abel and Mustafa Gezin, um, dedicated to building and releasing Rocky Linux uh, as our core mission. Infrastructure, we're responsible for um, the architecture, configuration, maintenance, all of the things for Rocky and the RESF uh, projects. Security, same thing, oversight, technical guidance. Um, Scott and Rob are industry professionals that have been around for years and years and years. They are, um, well, we are very lucky to have them in my opinion. Um, Rob was there on day one with the rest of us figuring out what was going on and uh, yeah, so, and then the testing team, which you'll notice is the one that doesn't have two leads. Um, we do want two leads for all of these teams, and it would be great um, to, you know, have more people involved on a lot of the stuff. The testing team is responsible for all of the releasing, uh, the releases that Rocky produces. So they do thorough testing, not just on our minor releases, where we're 
producing uh, like a large batch of updates, but also on individual updates that they build and continuously test to make sure that the packages are being installed and also uh, doing comparisons against upstream Red Hat sources to ensure uh, ABI compatibility. Um, these four teams collectively kind of set the direction and guidelines for Rocky and its six, um, as well as to foster collaboration with the broader ecosystem. That's sort of the implicit goal of these teams is to not just build Rocky, but also to foster and enable the collaboration with these teams and SIGs with upstream, not just in enterprise Linux, but in wherever that upstream community might be. Um, on the community operation side, we have four more teams. Um, community slash operations, um, this is probably the biggest special or team that we have. Um, we have a huge amount of users of Rocky that are you know, dedicated to be strong ambassadors of, of Rocky and you know, push for us whenever they go anywhere, pretty much. Um, the community teams led by Krista Burdain and Alexia Riviera Steinberg, um, they do moderation, they handle all of the kind of minutia of what it takes to run and release and uh, host a community, right? And it's, it's, it's quite involved. Uh, our documentation team, similarly, it's, a, it's kind of a support team that helps us to document the work that Rocky is doing, but give also documentarians um, a place that they can kind of document whatever they want. Um, I should have put a graph here, but there's a single document on our doc site that is completely not related to Rocky Linux at all, but it is the most viewed document we have because of just SEO. It's a document about NVChad, which is like a IDE, but written in NVim, NeoVim. And so it's just like everyone that goes and looks for how to configure it somehow ends up on the Rocky Linux doc site because someone wanted to write a doc about that. <laughs> um, our design and web teams are kind of obviously a little bit close together and work tightly with the, the community teams, our team rather. Um, the community team is always working to make the project more accessible. Um, our philosophy in Rocky Linux and the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation is that all are welcome. Um, all our current initiatives to lower barriers, improve on ramps, you know, have real ways that someone that goes and looks at Rocky Linux website or wiki can say, I want to get involved, I want to help, and be able to do that without pulling teeth. Um, in contrast with the more technical teams, these teams are responsible for like the public image of Rocky Linux. And it's not to say that the other teams don't have a part to play in the public image of Rocky Linux, um, but these teams, have to be the uh, the part that controls our public image. And, and so that's really where the distinction comes in. It's, it's about the technical side of what are we doing and the community side of how are we informing and delivering news to people about what we're doing. We try not to make breaking changes very often, but if we do need to make a breaking change for some reason, we want to be able to have a, a clear path to uh, communicate that to all of the affected users or anyone who might be affected. Um, that way. So now teams. Teams are for the core Rocky distribution. They, their focus is on the mission as stated to produce a compatible version of upstream enterprise Linux and uh, additionally to enable the development of other things on top of that. But the promise that Rocky Linux had made, has made is to stay compatible as 100% as we can for as long as we feasibly can. Um, and there's a lot of things that go into that and, and kind of outside the scope of this presentation in, in general, but um, we focus a lot and do a lot of work on helping our SIGs to be able to do what they need to do. Um, and so, on that subject, what is a SIG? Um, a SIG is a special interest group, and they're a vital part of our community. Special interest groups, you know, kind of historically are, um, you know, a group of individuals who are interested in a specific task, a specific group of uh, ideas or um, functions that 
that come together well. Um, and so these SIGs are where anyone who's interested in using Rocky Linux in any specific use case can extend the experience of using Rocky by packages, documentation, community engagement, and so many other ways. Like it's, it's both technical and non-technical, and every SIG has non-technical and technical things they need. Um, whereas our teams focus on the core goal of Rocky um, as an EL-compatible distribution, SIGs enable us to extend that experience, as I said, and help funnel contributors into participating uh, within other groups in Rocky Linux, as well as externally to Rocky Linux um, by a you know, stated intention that all special interest groups should be contributing upstream to if there's a overlapping special interest group in um, Fedora or, or CentOS to contribute to those and work in concert with them and not to duplicate efforts. Um, but also to go above and beyond that even to work with upstreams and get involved in Fedora, bring packages into Fedora so that they come into um, ELN, they come into CentOS Stream, and they come into RHEL, and they come into Rocky, and they're, it's for everyone. Um, and so we don't want to gatekeep any patches, we don't want to gatekeep any sources, we want to enable these SIGs to participate in the broader EL ecosystem without um, too much of a on-ramp to getting to there because it, it can be a lot to get into say the fedora ecosystem you have to become a uh, fedora packager say you want to contribute something to apple like you need to become a fedora packager so that you can contribute to apple becoming a fedora packager not a hard process but it's also a bit daunting and there's a lot to go into it and it takes a lot of um it takes a lot of reading <laughs> and understanding and uh Crying, maybe, maybe a little bit of crying, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I'm really glad to be able to have our special interest groups as a way we can help funnel those contributions into those ecosystems where our on ramp is a little bit lower, maybe, and we can get people involved and see what their interest levels are and hopefully funnel them into the right places upstream. Um, it, it's obviously not like our job per se to to do that funneling, but if the people are coming to work on Rocky and to participate here, we might as well be encouraging them to also participate upstream as the rest of us like to. Um, so yeah, in essence, SIGs allow focused development on areas that a particular group wants to work on. Um, and also to be a pathway to membership into the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation. So each SIG, this is kind of just a SIG guide from our wiki, um, but each SIG operates more or less autonomously, guided by its charter and leadership. Um, someone from the team leads of Rocky need to, or one of those, one of the people in the SIG needs to be someone from the, um, the team leads, sort of just like an executive sponsor sort of a thing. Um, and the SIGs are expected to be aligned with the broader mission of Rocky Linux. So we're not going to have a Rocky Linux SIG that's building like, can't think of a good example. I was gonna say Nix OS, but that's not a great example because, anyways. Um, <laughs> there, the, the SIG's contributions range from custom packages and like images for Rocky to documentation and best practices. Um, we have a security SIG that releases um, updates and um, override packages for Rocky, fixing various things or um, open SSH, they are stripping some linkages off of it that aren't strictly necessary to improve uh, some security posture, you know, et cetera. Um, and they're a bit more than working groups. They're, they're many communities where the Rocky members are able to share their knowledge, mentor one another, um, collaborate on these smaller scale projects and grow into, you know, leadership potentially positions within Rocky Linux and become the next, you know, generation essentially is, is the idea, right? Um, they're open to anyone, everyone, beginners to experts, technical and non-technical, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, they're easy to get into too, so we can do that. But uh, it, understanding the Rocky Linux SIGs, I think, is really fundamental to understanding the philosophies that Rocky has around upstream contributions and around the diversity and uh, depth of the Rocky Linux community. As I was discussing earlier, right, like, we were all kind of random strangers at the beginning, and now some of the people I met in Rocky, I invited to my wedding. Like, <laughs> um, 
so there is there's that sort of community that we really want to foster not just the group that we have now but expanding that group making it a, a big community and looking at our upstream communities have who have done a really great job at doing exactly that so SIGs are very cool we've established this yes everyone agree but what about Rocky? So Rocky is just rel, right? Kind of. But also, no. This is some feedback we get often, I think. Um, Rocky is, is just rel, and it's true. We're actually kind of proud of it. Um, <laughs> we don't want to be copycats. That's not the purpose. But our stated mission is to be a 100% compatible EL distribution. And we as a team and as a community have heard and discussed that this stated goal is really important to people. Um, that's why we're continuing in the path that we have been on and want to continue that for as long as we can. And it's also why we do a lot of work now on upstream collaboration even more than we had been before, trying to show that we are acting in good faith in the community to enable the work of, of the enterprise Linux workloads, which we are and have wanted to from the beginning. So when Rocket Linux first started, um, we had a lot of grand ideas. <laughs> There's also a lot of uncertainty. Um, we created a lot of SIGs that had initial interests, which are, you'll probably notice, almost direct one-for-one -one copies of many of the CentOS SIGs. Um, many of these SIGs are not really that active, which um, is because of a few reasons. Um, there was a lot of uncertainty around CentOS Stream when Rocky Linux came out, and CentOS, and what the future was going to hold. And uh, it wasn't even until well, about a year or so after, don't quote me, um, that there was information available on whether special interest groups in uh, CentOS would be able to continue building on uh, Red Hat build routes uh, in addition to the CentOS stream ones. Um, this is actually a good story though because one of these, I think in here, the NFV SIG can actually just go 100% away because instead of reproducing work and doing things in Rocky, um, about a year ago actually there was a issue in OpenStack Ansible upstream where sent uh, the RDO project, um, RPM distribution of OpenStack, um, builds on CentOS Stream, which is awesome. And we're able to use those packages essentially one for one on Rocky for 99% of, uh, of use cases. They get all get built in the CentOS community build system. Um, and so I had this issue where uh, it was like a, some limited Vinavan driver was being updated and CentOS Stream caused a little bit of a breakage, but when installing on Rocky 8 or Rel 8, and uh, I was able to work with the RDO team in, in the CentOS NFV SIG to you know, take kind of ownership of the Rel build routes for the NFV packages to enable those uh, working on Rocky. And so that's another goal for our cloud SIG is to try and you know, get that into um, maintainership for, for those as well to not just be me, but be other people too. Um, Ultimately, the, the overlap with these SIGs led to a lot of confusion. Um, and we, when we found out that the um, CentOS SIGs were going to be able to build against Red Hat build routes, it was made it pretty clear that the path for Rocky Linux SIGs was for upstream contribution because there was already a way to build against real RHEL and distribute those for, for users to, to use. So, uh, rather than bifurcating or trifurcating the communities, we can all collaborate in a single space to work on the betterment of these packages for, for enterprise Linux users. Um, we encourage all of our SIGs, as I was saying, to participate in their update uh, upstream communities that they rely on, whether it's you know CentOS or AML Linux. If, if there's overlap there, we totally encourage collaboration. We want the special interest groups to have packages that work across all of the ELs and not have anything that's like specific to Rocky per se. The security SIG is a good example of that. The mitigations that are there work across all of them. They're tested across uh, Rocky, CentOS Stream, Alma. Um, and this extends to the core distribution as well, right? Like 
our release engineering team is involved in various Fedora projects and CentOS SIGs, um, and we want to encourage that for, for all of the people involved in the project, really. The first SIGs that kind of got, got started and have stuck around are our alternative architecture SIG, Cloud SIG, HBC SIG, and our security SIG. Um, AltArch is kind of self-explanatory in a lot of ways, but a lot of the focus there is on um, running Rocky on various single board computers, um, modern RPIs. There is some also effort that we want to do a bootstrap for ARM 7 VL, which is 32-bit ARM for some of the older RPIs that people still want to use. Um, <coughs> We're also building generic ARM images and generic, generic Raspberry Pi uh, kernels for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5 because there's some page size changes. Um, the SIG Cloud builds packages for Rocky Linux as essentially release blocking artifacts. Um, they're responsible for the container images, um, RootFS's generic cloud, EC2, GCP, Oracle Cloud, Azure, Vagrant, probably missing something, but there's a whole you know, wider array of those that are, are generated and we're constantly trying to evolve and uh, make the, the situation better. <laughs> we we're currently using Image Factory, um, which is hopefully going away, and that means we need to change. So um, I think right now the Cloud SIG is going to be looking at Kiwi, which is the CentOS Alternative Images SIG, as well as the Fedora Cloud SIG are also using. Um, so far, it's been a pretty good experience, and it works really well. Um, our HPC SIG is, is pretty active. They collaborate really closely with the Open HPC, uh, Open High Performance Computing um, Community, um, to build packages and provide them for the HPC Open HPC project without the Open HPC project having to build, compile, release, host, etc. All of those things. So we've brought Werewolf Four into the HPC um, SIG. There is a Intel Arc driver GPU, um, Intel Arc GPU driver KMOD that we're testing. We're trying to get some um, hardware to be able to do the testing, but working pretty closely with some Intel folks on um, those drivers to enable them on Rocky and contribute those back upstream. Um, and then, as I was saying, the security SIG, we provide uh, extra security related packages, um, rebuilds of glibc with some patches, um, hardened malloc, which is a new package, as well as the Linux kernel runtime guard. Um, so there's a, a combination of new and uh, new and override packages for that that SIG to be enabled. But all of these really are um, optional, right? Like if you install Rocky, you're going to get Rocky, but if you want to use anything from SIG Cloud, it's just a DNF command away, really. You have to DNF install Rocky Release Cloud, and then you'll have access to all the repositories that are available there. This is the full list of SIGs-ish. Um, they do vary in membership and in uh, activity, so they do need to be pruned. That's something that we're actively working on in the governance side of, of Rocky and the teams is, you know, how do we collect feedback from the SIGs, find out what they're doing, make sure that people are actually doing stuff without one of us having to go to every single meeting and make sure that things are happening. Um, and also, you know, is it acceptable for a SIG to just be a little bit dormant? Like, probably. So, trying to figure out a lot, a lot of those things, but you know, we have an AI SIG. A lot of these also have a lot of overlap, so it's possible they'll be condensed in the future. Like AI and HPC are kind of uh, similar. Um, but we also have some that are wanted by users. Um, like they really want to use VFX stuff on, on um, Rocky or do embedded things or do desktop things and, and KDE and different uh, experiences, right? Um, they don't currently have any one that is interested enough to like sponsor the SIG and be part of it and run it, but that's you and you are interested in getting any of these going or any of these on the side and want to participate in them in any manner, feel free to time me, find me after the talk. Um, yeah. So, for SIGs and infrastructure, our focus is on moving fast and breaking things um, for at least small values of breaking things. 
as I was saying, you know, Rocky's stable at its core, thanks in huge part to the excellent engineering work done upstream to make Enterprise Linux as stable as it is. Um, and the openness of the CentOS stream development process actually makes it easier to build and release and test Rocky and enable the SIGs to do what they're doing. Um, in fact, if you want to stick around, Troy's doing talk about CentOS stream. <laughs> Thank you for the plug. <laughs> um, our SIGs have audiences similar to enterprise Linux users, right? Like uh, they want stability and they want um, not necessarily new, since again, similar to the Apple projects. Um, we provide a lot of tools to these SIGs from uh, our build system Paradot to Git services and CI CD pipelines, um, collaboration with our testing team to get SIG artifacts built into the uh, automated testing during our releases, hosting packages and repositories and all this other kind of stuff too. Um, we're pretty proud of our build system Paradot. It came out of our usage of Fedora tooling like Mock and Koji and, and the rest of those things and we're constantly iterating on it. Um, this is sort of what it looks like now. You can just go to uh, paradot.build.resf.org um, and you can see exactly what this is. You'll see I'm not logged in. Um, so you can check out all of the builds and look at the logs and, and see pretty much everything that's going on there. Um, it needs some UI work. <laughs> it needs some UX work. Um, but we're very fortunate through our partners to be able to have um, the ability for SIGs to build against every architecture that Rocky is available on. So for 8, x86 and ARM, and for 9, x86 and ARM, as well as S390X and PowerPC64. Um, the latter of those two are donated from IBM Linux One and from the Oregon State University Open Source Lab. Um, right now, Paradot uses Kubernetes, uh, Buhis, and we're actively working on it, working on making it not use Kubernetes so that it's easier to deploy um, and have like a single binary where we can run it in server mode or agent mode and do do clustering kind of that way. Um, this architectural change is better for some pretty obvious reasons, but also for some like not obvious reasons. Um, Risk v do recently has donated us 15 Vision 5.2s, which are a small single board computer for, um, for Risk v development. They're fairly cheap, um, but they sent us all the stuff and accoutrements to use it. And uh, the intention and what we're going to be using this for is to bootstrap Risk v on Rocky, probably for version 10-ish, because that's where upstream Fedora has landed. Um, some most of the support for this. And uh, we also have a budget for buying you, yes you, <laughs> an SPC of your choosing if you would like to help us test it and bring it to Rocky. Um, the only thing we really ask is that you join us during release weeks to help us test the next version, make sure it's working. That's it, you can use it for whatever you want. We do some boring stuff, single sign-on, container orchestration, getting woken up in the middle of the night. Um, this last, second to last one here, hosting hardware for testing is something that we're going to be getting into. That's something that our SIGs are kind of blocked on at this point is the hardware needed for a lot of the tests that they want to do. Like our HPC SIG is like, we want to do full end-to-end -end testing of clusters. And I'm like, I don't have hardware to do that and I don't have GPUs to do that. So there's some, some things we need to figure out and some problems we need to approach with that. So how do you get involved in a SIG? Um, SIGs meet regularly. They have all of their meetings on our uh, public calendar. Most of the time they meet on Google Meet, um, but they also, every single SIG has a channel in our uh, Mattermost instance, which is also a bridge to Libera IRC. Um, and that's for real-time communication, et cetera. Um, also every SIG has a space on git.resf.org where we host Git-T. Um, that's where the SIGs communicate uh, for like longer term project planning um, by using repositories and um, the, the functionalities within Git to um, build and release their wikis, et cetera. They can keep meeting notes, all of those sorts of fun things. Um, it's really easy to join, like I said, like you can hop in the channel, introduce yourself, come by one of the meetings, introduce yourself. Um, they're very welcoming, no one's very scary. I might be the scariest person. Um, I'll go through this really quickly. So I already talked a bit about the SIG Cloud stuff. Um, Rocky's available on anywhere clouds are sold. 
Um, we have a vanilla partition layout um, and a hybrid LVM layout uh, available that you can choose which one you want to use. Um, got some specialized images like in Vagrant and container root FSs as well as for uh, the container toolbox.org project. So you can like toolbox enter Rocky Linux 9 or whatever um, and get a not immutable but workstation on your station workstation to do things. Um, the big thing that the Cloud Sig does is produce a optimized version of the Rocky 8 and 9 kernels that have backports of various drivers um, from Linux. Um, that's GVNIC, IDPF right now. Um, there's some also some small changes that had to be made for like booting ARM and, and some other things on um, Google because of the hardware that they're running. Uh, most recently, actually, the Cloud Sig collaborated with the Azure Community Galleries um, team to release our images outside of the Azure marketplace. So it's, you know, you can literally just go on Azure, find our image, click I want to use this, and you go and use it. You don't have to agree to any terms. There's no, no anything like that. And previously that was nigh if impossible on, on Azure. So um, we're really happy to be um, part of that. And as I said, we're testing out um, Kiwi from OpenSUSE and uh, that was after seeing it work really well for both CentOS and for, um, for Fedora. Again, quickly, HPC, I already talked about open HPC collaboration, um, partnering and working with Fedora on some packages that are already in Fedora or adding new ones. Uh, we're working with a Slurm maintainer, for example. Um, always trying to establish a smoother contribution path for how we can get people into Fedora. Um, obviously, we. It would be great if the packages that aren't already in Fedora could just be in Fedora and we're not just maintaining them in a SIG. Um, we can bring them to Apple. They can be available for a lot of more users and um, lots, of, lots of great things for that. So I already talked about testing a little bit. Um, get that Intel Arc GPU driver K-Mod. Um, in the future, we'll probably do secure boot signing for those as well. And um, there's a lot of interest as well in uh, tensor processing units, um, kind of from Google as well. Um, with their TPUs as well as like some interest in um, what's that one they use for frigate? I don't remember. Anyways, Google has a lot of those sorts of things that people are interested in. Um, so what's the future of six? We've got another number of upcoming initiatives um, as well as some more overarching goals like I mentioned around documentation, UX, UI things for Peridot, um, plus additional hardware and testing capabilities. We've got some challenges that are being addressed around acquiring hosting hardware, um, particular, particularly for testing more bespoke things like the Intel GPUs. Um, and additionally, onboarding and encouraging collaboration with upstream groups is it's a tall task, right? Like people only have so many hours in a day, they got stuff to do. It's, as I mentioned, not the easiest thing to become a Fedora packager and contribute there. So we're thinking about all those things and how we can keep people around and not scare them away. Um, despite this, still working on the impact, or looking to extend the impact and effectiveness of our SIGs. Um, smaller, more focused attention on things and, and groups that are trying to accomplish really specific tasks and that we can report on from a community perspective. And um, yeah, hopefully we can continue to encourage our growth and, and uh, et cetera. If you want to get involved, you can easily join our chat. Um, we would love for you to be involved. Um, there's various options you can use, chat, um, our news, there's an RSS feed somewhere there, uh, our forums where we post announcements as well, and then we also have a you know, traditional listserv sort of thing. Any questions? I, I have two. <laughs> First one is quick. Uh, does AI stand for alternative images? Artificial intelligence. <laughs> okay, now the, the real question. Um, if the cloud is a blocking SIG, mm -hmm. why isn't it in a team? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't really have a straight answer. <laughs> it sounds like this kernel stuff, probably. But, uh, there, so the kernel stuff is, is aside from that. Um, or It's in the SIG, but the... It's mostly that there were people in the SIG from the beginning that were interested in building cloud images and container images and everything else. And so it kind of has naturally been a SIG, but it's also sort of a team. Um, we actually have the same thing with, 
what we call SIG core, but it's actually just release engineering. So we'll throw that term around just because it's sort of a legacy thing and sounds good, I guess. <laughs> but it's really just it's just the release engineering team. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it is odd, I will agree, to have a SIG, especially in the layout that I've just described, have produce release blocking artifacts. Um, but the tooling that we're using to create those artifacts is part of the um, SIG core or relenge group. Um, we have a thing called empanadas that we wrote that builds packages, well, builds packages of packages, so containers and, and images and stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope this gave you some information about what's going on in Rocky. Um, I hope to see you on Mattermost. If you want to email me, you can. I may or may not respond. <laughs>